So I got this comment in my Discord recently from nobody. Hi, Sandwood, I'm the guy who asked to make the simple combination lock. So let's make a combination lock in Construct 3. First thing we're gonna need is an empty project. Let's now head over to the event sheet and we're gonna right click and we're gonna add a global variable. And we're gonna to need to create a global variable for each of the possible combination numbers. So let's just assume that this lock has three possible numbers. So we need a variable that will control which one of those numbers is which number. And I think I've said the word number way too many times and confused everybody. So let's just call this one number one, and then we're going to copy that out two more times. In fact, if I just hold down control and push C, V, C, and V again, we're going to get numbers one, two, and three. And these numbers are going to represent the padlock combination numbers. So now we need to create a quick sprite just to give us a visual representation of those numbers. So let's make a 32 by 32. Let's color it a kind of yellowy gold color. That's going to be our lock. Uh, in fact, that's a lie. Let's make it 64 high. Move that to the bottom. And then let's go ahead with a big fat brush. Not that fat, maybe three. And we're going to make a lock padlock. Now you obviously can make a much better lock padlock than me. Um, I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. We're going to make a second frame, which it will be unlocked. Let's do that. And there we go. There's our two frames. We're going to set the animation speed to zero because we don't want it to play. And we can put it on our screen and there is our lock. Now we need to represent the numbers. It's got this red box here, by the way, because that is the collision, the bounding box. We can right click set it to bounding box size it doesn't really matter but if it bothers you like it bothers me it needs to represent the whole sprite so there's our padlock <clears throat> now we need to create the numbers that you can input in order to make this thing pop open and if you get the correct sequence it will pop open and if you don't get the correct sequence it won't pop open so let's double click and let's create some text boxes we're going to put one at the top there. I'm going to change the size to six and make it a little bit smaller. And I'm going to call this one TXT underscore one because that's combination number one. And I'm going to copy and paste this out a couple more times to create three variables uh, of the same, three instances of the same sprite. So these are all exactly the same sprite. You can see the name up here, TXT1, TXT1, TXT1. We now need to be able to tell them apart, and we're gonna do that by assigning an instance variable. And this is effectively like an ID tag. So I'm gonna add this one in here, and I'm gonna call this one number lock. And this is gonna be lock number one. This one here is going to be lock number two. So on the left hand side here, you can see I'm changing the instance variable. And this one is going to be lock number three. So now, although they're the same object in the game, they've got three different, uh, very different IDs. This is one, two, and three. I'm going to set the text here to zero. I'm going to set this text here to zero as well. And I'm going to set this text to zero. Now we're going to go back to the event sheet and add our first event. So we're going to add an event. And we are going to say mouse because I have the mouse already installed in the game. If you don't have the mouse installed, go back to the layout, double click, and then you'll be able to find it down here in input. Mine doesn't show because I already have it. I also have the keyboard as well, which you can see on the right hand side. But let's go and say mouse. And we're going to say on object clicked. And we're going to say left clicked. And we're going to pick the text object. So when we click this text object, I want to start scrolling through the numbers. So we are going to click on this whole event and push B on the keyboard to create a sub event. I'm going to double click into that sub event. And now that we've said to click that object, we know there's three of them. So we need to now identify which one of the three we're clicking on. So we're going to select the object and we're going to compare the instance variable that we gave it. And we gave it the instance variable number lock and there was three possible numbers, one, two, and three. So we're going to say if the number lock that we're clicking on is equal to one, and we're going to go ahead and copy that out and paste it two more times underneath. 
using control C and control V and we're going to change the number lock on each of these to match the instance variables on the actual sprite uh, sorry on the actual object itself so now we have an event that says if we click number lock number one number two and number three what do we want to happen well if we click on number lock number one we're going to go to add action and we're going to go to those variables that we set up before and we're going to add to number one one now what that's going to do is it's going to add a variable it's going to add one to this variable every time we click it but we're not going to be able to see that because we haven't told the system to display this variable number in this text object so we need to add an event and we need to go system and we need to say every tick now just as we've done before we need to now determine which one of these is relevant so i'm going to go ahead and select them all by clicking in this left hand section hold down control on the keyboard and i'm going to drag them again a copy of them underneath every tick and we're going to then drag them up so that they nest in underneath this every tick we can go ahead and delete that and now we can say every tick if number lock is equal to number one we're going to say text and we're going to set that text of that specific variable that instance of that text object we're going to set it to that global variable number one and you can tell they're global variables because they have a little world next to them on the left so click on number one and we're going to do the exact same thing for number two and number three but we're going to double click in I'm going to change number one to number two. I'm going to change number one here to number three. So what you're effectively doing now is saying every every single frame of the game, so at every possible moment in the game, if the number um, of this text object, the instance variable, is equal to one, then we're going to set the value of that. So that text value here, where I've put zero, we're going to set it to whatever this says up here. So now by adding number one by clicking, it should update every time we click on it. Now obviously we can go past 9 and on to like 20, 21, 22 which is no good because when we wanted to go past the top number of 9 we want to go back to number 1 again. So we need to add a few conditions to this event up here and we can do that by creating more sub events. So we're going to say on left click if uh, that number locks instance variable is equal to 1 select the whole line and push B on the keyboard. So we're gonna drop down another sub event and we're gonna now check to see what number that number is. So we're gonna go compare variable number one and we're gonna say that if it's less than or equal to nine, uh, sorry, if it's less than or equal to eight, you can go ahead and add one. Click on this event again, add another sub event underneath and we're gonna say system and we're gonna compare the variable and we're going to say if it's greater than or equal to 9, then we're going to set it back to 1 again. So we're going to say add 1 for here. And we're going to go back and we're going to say set value of one number 1 to 1. So as soon as we get to 9, if it's equal to 9 or higher, we're going to set it back to 1. But then I think what that's going to do is it's not going to give us a number nine. I think we need to change that slightly. So four, five, six, seven, eight, one. Yeah, there we go. We need to change this one here to equal to nine, like I originally thought, and then change this one to 10, which means it's never going to be 10 because if it gets to 10, it's going to go instantly back to one again. So now we can just click on it all day long and it's just going to go to nine and back to one again. So now we can now determine what number that combination needs to be. We can do the exact same thing for number two by copying out these two. Hold down control on the keyboard, drag them down and nest them in underneath. We can do it again for three and nest them in underneath. And let's not forget to change the number one to number two. And this one to number three. So it's corresponding to the correct numbers. We should be able to change these numbers to whatever we want, except for some reason that these are going up past nine, which we don't want. Ah, it's because we've got, we need to change the numbers here as well. So double click on this one and say number two, number two, and number three, and number three. So now we've got some working mechanics. We can now scroll through these numbers to try and pick the correct combination. 
Now we're going to set a really easy combination. The combination is going to be one, two, three. For that, we need global variables. So let's right click and add a global variable. We're going to call this one correct one. And like I did with the other three, the other two, I'm going to copy and paste that out for correct two and correct three. Now this is the code. This is the correct combination that we want these three numbers to be at. So I'm going to say correct one is equal to one. I'm going to say correct two is equal to two. I'm going to say correct three is equal to three. The only problem is they start on zero, which we don't want because zero isn't part of our scrolling combination. So let's go back and just change these to one, one, and one. Now we need some Boolean variables. So I'm going to right click, we're going to add a variable and we're going to change it from number to Boolean. And we're going to call this one, oh, correct, ball one for the sake of copying and pasting two more so now we've got three so what we're effectively going to do is set these from false to true if the number matches so we need another event in order to handle that so I'm going to add an event and we're going to go to system and we're going to compare some variables we're going to see if number one is equal to correct one I'm going to copy that out two more times and I'm also going to check to see if number two is equal to correct two the boolean correct two so I'm going to see if number three is equal to correct three. So if number one is equal to correct one, which it will be when we start, because number one is going to start at one, which will change here as well. So we're going to say if correct one is equal to the number one, which it will be when we start the game, then we need to add an action and go to system and we need to set the Boolean of correct ball one to true. We need to copy this out for two and three and change this from two and change this one to three. Now, just for visual representation, I'm going to go ahead and create another sprite and I'm going to make it 16 by 16 and I'm gonna color it green and I'm gonna give it a second frame which I'm gonna color red I'm going to set the speed to zero so it doesn't play and I'm going to set red as the first frame. And this is just going to be a visual representation of whether or not we've got the correct number. And I'm going to call this one indicator. I'm also going to give it a variable, the same as I did for the other ones. I'm going to call it ID. It's going to be a number. It's going to be one. So it correlates with object one here, text object one. I'm going to change this one to object two and I'm going to change this one to object three. Let's come down and add another event and we're going to say system and we're going to say is boolean set correct one. Then we're going to add a sub event and we're going to say indicator and we're going to compare its ID, its instance variable. If it's equal to one, then we're going to say indicator set frame to one. And I'm going to copy this out more times and we're going to do it for boolean 2. The ID is equal to 2. Set frame to 1 and if it's equal to 3, oh and change, don't forget to change this one to 3 as well. Then if I go back and play it, we can see that 1 is already green because it's already set to 1. As soon as I click on this one it's going to go to 2 and that's now going to go green. And then as soon as I get to three on this one, it's going to go green. However, it stays green no matter what numbers I put into the other ones. I'm going to minimize all these three now, and I'm going to copy them all, paste them again. And this time I'm going to select the top line to say is correct ball one true and push I on the keyboard, which change it to a false, which means if it's not true, I'll do the same for two and number three. And I'm going to change this now to zero zero and zero so if it's not true set it back to frame zero which is red now i need to go back to this if number one is equal to correct one set boolean to true and i need to copy and paste it and i need to invert that one and i'll set this one to false do the same thing for number two i'm going to invert it i'm going to set this one to false i'm going to set this one again 
false, and I'm going to change this one to false. Now what should happen is if we scroll past the number, it should set it back to false, which will then automatically update our color codes and change them back to red. See, I can scroll through the numbers now. As soon as I get to two, it goes green. As soon as I get off, it goes back to red. So now there's only one possible way we can get all three green, and that is by having the combination of one, two, and three. Now, for the sake of uh, tidiness, let's go ahead and minimize all of this down. Right click, create a group, and call it lock logic. Bring it back up to the top, and then select, oh, select the whole block, drag it into lock logic, and there we go. It's nice and tidy in the events. So let's add an event, and we are now going to go to system, and we're going to compare the booleans. We're going to say boolean one. And I'm going to click just inside this section here, not the whole event. And I'm going to push Control C, Control V, and Control V again. And I'm going to check Boolean 2, and I'm going to check Boolean 3. Now, what this event's saying is all three of these things now have to be true in order for the event to work. So if, if correct ball 1 is true, correct ball 2 is true, and correct ball 3 is true, add an action, we're going to say Sprite, and we're going to set the frame of the Sprite to 1, which is the open frame. And now, hopefully, if I get all three correct, it goes back to open. And that's how you create a padlock. And if you wanna lock it again, if one of these combinations is not correct, you can copy out the whole block. You can set these all to not true, but one thing you'll need to do is select the whole block and push, U, uh, push Y on the keyboard, and that'll change it to an OR event. Because this one here is saying that all three must be true. This one now is saying that if any one of these is true, set the frame animation back to zero. So now we're open. If I change number one, it's locked. If I change number three, it's locked. If I change one, it's locked. So all three must be true in order for that to work. Of course, you don't need to display the green squares on screen. You can have that off screen on the events. So if, we, if you didn't necessarily want the visual representation, oh, you could just move these over to the side out of the screen and then you've just got your combinations. You can shrink these down. You can put them on the actual combination lock itself. If you want to, you can really do it however you want. It doesn't matter. I'm just glad that I was able to help you with your padlock. So now you can say, oh, I want all the combinations. I bet it's one, two, three, because one, two, three is such an easy combination. And there it is, is open, and that was the correct combination. If the video was useful, it helped you out, or you found it enjoying or entertaining, uh, or you learned something, please feel free to hit the like button. It does really do help out the channel. I know I haven't made any tutorials in a very long time. But if the video does well, and people like it and want more, then I will continue to make them. As always, if you have any suggestions for future tutorials, if there's something you'd like to know how to do, then please feel free to leave a comment. Uh, join the Discord, I have a channel on there which you can leave tutorial suggestions in. And until then, enjoy the rest of your day, evening, morning, whatever it is, and I'll see you in the next video.